we have two users. We have a producer and we have a consumer. The producer owns resources and the consumer wants to get access to those resources. The producer is willing to share them, but the producer wants to control what can be done with the resources for a particular consumer. How do we do this? To make that happen, there's an application involved. The producer uses a producer application, and that application performs the operations. And for the consumer, there's a consumer application. And that's going to be used to get access to the, to the particular resources. To make all this happen, we are going to take the producer, which is also known as a resource owner, and that application will talk to a resource server. The resource server is part of the user managed access architecture. The resource server knows about registered resources and it knows how to set policies on those resources and it knows how to then handle the access requests from the consumer, which is also called a requesting party and they'll use an application to gain access to those resources. To complete the solution here, for the user managed access architecture, we have an authorization server. And that authorization server is used to perform authentication operations um, for the OAuth specification and the user managed access specification, as well as some policy um, interfaces. The resource owner is going to register the resources and the client application, which is for the requesting party, is going to access those resources. On the left side of the screen, we have an application. This application represents a user that is an owner of resources and how the owner can manage their resources. On the right side of the screen, we have a different application. This represents the requesting party. This is the person who wants to access those resources. If we take a look at the application on the left here, the resource owner, D. Crane stands for Danny Crane is logged in. And we can see that Danny has at the moment four resources uh, registered in the system. Uh, retirement savings, patient record, a building permit, insurance claim. We can look at individual one of these items and we can see various attributes about these resources. Um, resources has allowed scopes. We have four allowed scopes and who this resource is currently being shared with and then what scopes that particular person has to this resource. You notice I can have different people with different scopes. This gives us a perspective of our, of our uh, shared resources from a resource perspective. We also have another view that's what we call a people perspective. This is where we could look at not what resources I have shared, but who has access to my resources. So here we can see Amy Adams has access to four resources. And when I hover over the lines, it shows me what scopes those particular resources that particular person has. It's just another view into what I'm sharing uh, to who. We also have uh, another feature here where we can see pending requests. Here is where we have resources that are pending um, someone who wants to access our system. So for example here, we're gonna clear these out. We're gonna deny these requests because we're gonna recreate, we're gonna re-request them. All right, so let's switch over to the requesting party. So here I'm logged in as Barb Jensen, and if I look at the Share With Me tab, you'll notice there's no resources that are currently being shared to Barb Jensen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a discovery feature of this tool where I can go off and discover um, what resources a person may have. And this is a resource that a person has chosen to be discoverable. I don't have a resource right now. It just says it's discoverable, and then I would have to request it. So you can see there's a request button here. We're going to submit this request, and we'll submit a request for another one. 
So let's go back to our resource owner, Danny Crane. Danny Crane comes back and you notice he's got two pending requests again. So in this case, we're going to approve them. Well, as we approve them, we have the ability to control the scopes for this resource. Um, we have a scope called Meta, Content, Print, and Download. We're going to limit this to just say Meta and Content. And we'll save that. And we're going to do the next one here. And we're going to say, well, you can do Print, but you can't do Download. And so we say, got it. Now, if I go look at my resources, I still have the same four resources, but if I go to the people view, I now see Barb Jensen. And Barb Jensen has access to two resources, the retirement savings and the building permit. Well, I know Barb, so she's eventually going to want access to this patient record, but didn't request it, or more likely is this particular resource is not discoverable. It's discoverable set the faults. So I'm going to explicitly grant Barb Jensen access to this resource. So here I can click the share with. I find Barb in our list here. Where's Barb Jensen? There's Barb. And I can decide what scopes I want to give Barb. So I hit share. Now, if I go back, I see Barb is now in this resource. I can go to my people view and Barb Jensen has now access to three resources. And I don't have no more pending uh, requests for access to my resources. Let's go back to Barb's interface here on the right. And you'll notice the share with me panel now is populated with the three resources, the two that Barb requested, and then the one that was explicitly granted uh, by Danny. You'll notice there's different scopes. This particular application is aware of the scope. So when I click on it, for example, if you look at the scopes here, I can print, but I can't download. Download is disabled. So this application is leveraging the scopes to decide what functionality is made available. Um, I can look at the content of the actual resource here. It's just a JSON structure. Let's go back and look at what else is shared with me. Here's that patient record. Now in this case, you notice I have these available to me. I, they were not, the download was not available in the other one. And the last one here, you'll notice I cannot print and I cannot download. I could request them, but I, right now I don't have access. So that just shows how Danny Crane can control who can have access and um, what that person can do with Danny's resource. Um, one of the last items here we'll talk about is there's a feature in this particular application that was enabled, if you noticed it, called Revoke Access. Uh, traditionally, only the owner of a resource can manage who has access. But you may have a scenario where you, uh, you are the person who's been granted access, but maybe for liability reasons or legal reasons or whatever, you no longer want to be associated to that resource. So you want to revoke your own access to that resource. So if I click this revoke access, it actually removes my access to that resource so that uh, I'm no longer associated with it. That's an overview of uh, what you can do with user managed access in this um, simple example using a um, resource owner and a requesting party.